Christians, UL right now, 6-2 and two overall, 3-1 and one in conference. On the top of their side of the Sun Belt, Coach Napier, what's going on, man? How you doing this morning? I'll tell you what, it's a great day to be alive. Yeah, it is, man. It is. Like, football weather is here. Uh, big games this weekend. Coach, you all have had a couple nice wins in a row here, sitting atop your conference. Um, what's, what's, what, what's the mood of your kind of program? What, what's the mood over there in Lafayette right now? Well, you know, we had 16-day break. Uh, before the Texas State homecoming game this past weekend, you know, we kind of changed gears a little bit. You know, we got five games in November um, in position to kind of do what we want to do here, yep. which is win the Western Division. And the work's in front of us. We, we check one of those boxes. And, you know, we've moved forward. We're working really hard on uh, Coastal Carolina here with a real quick turnaround Saturday to Thursday transition. So, you know, we're grinding it out. You know, today's like a Thursday for us. A um, little bit different week, but I like the attitude and morale of our kids. You know, we're excited about the opportunity. You know, I think, you know, that's what you want to do. Uh, you want to be in contention. And yeah. You want to be a factor. Um, and I think that's where we're at and the work's in front of us to do. And that's all you can ask for at this point. Yeah, make no mistake. You look at that Sun Belt Western Division right now. The Cajuns at three and one in conference. Y'all do control your own destiny. Maybe headed for a rematch with App State. We'll have to see how the other side of the division works out. But I, I know you got to take it one game at a time, Coach. And tomorrow you got Coastal, and that goes in a little extended break after that if you get past that test. But it really is lining up nicely. Um, and and it's been. It's been interesting how quickly you've affected this turnaround, at least outside looking in. Um, do you ever stop and think about that, or are you just, you're just in it right now, I'm guessing? Yeah, I mean, we're in the middle of the fight. You know, I mean, I think uh, I think that's one of the reasons we've had success. You know, first thing is we hired really good people. You know, I think we've got tons of talented people. We've got a good mix of uh, veteran-wise a little bit older crowd, and then we've got a lot of young, talented people here. Uh, we've benefited from a great administration, uh, not only in our athletic department, but from our president. Uh, and, and it's a very capable place, in my opinion. You know, we all know the talent that surrounds this area. Yeah. Um, you know, we work really hard on improving our roster. You know, I think we've got a sound process in place in terms of developing the players. Um, and, you know, it, it the number one thing we've done is we've really established uh, great relationships and great trust uh, with the players. You know, I think there's good uh, relationships between the, the staff here. You know, so it's a place that I think everyone looks to look forward to coming to the building every day and going to work. And that's half the battle. You know, I've coached a lot of different places for a lot of different people. Um, you know, you try to go hire people that have got great character and integrity. Yeah. Uh, that have expertise in what they're what they're assigned to do, uh, and you got to have a sound process in place. I've been fortunate to work for some really good people, and uh, we use some of those things. And certainly, we have our own way as well. Yeah. So, uh, coach, we're talking to UL head coach Billy Napier here on Off the Bench, one four five hundred point three ninety four seven ESPN. Uh, I, I'd, I'd be remiss if I didn't ask you about. Tangentially, some of those people that you used to work for, um, LSU Alabama this Saturday, 1v2 once again uh, for the first time since 2011. You were an offensive analyst uh, for Alabama back in 2011. Do you have any memories from the preparation for that game or, or the game itself? Yeah, absolutely, man. I can tell you uh, as much about John Chavis as you want to talk about. <laughs> Certainly, a uh, huge game in the regular season, and then we had about I'm not sure how many days, maybe 35 days or something, you know, to prepare. We did not play in the SEC championship game that year, so we had a little bit of an extended period of time to prepare yeah. uh, for that national championship game. Uh, you know, um, those were unbelievably talented teams. You know, I mean, you're talking about um, a lot of those players are still playing. Yeah, I think the number, Coach, is like – 45 NFL guys, nine first-round yeah. picks. It's it's yeah. really dumb. It's really dumb. Yeah, I mean, I, I remember watching just in pregame, you know, you'd be assigned certain responsibilities. I'd be down there watching uh, LSU's team. You know, they, they both sides were loaded, and and that's 
what the SEC and the SEC West in particular should be. And, and this will be no different. You know, both these teams are yeah. extremely talented. Um, and I'd be lying if I'm didn't say I'm I'm excited about playing on Thursday and having an opportunity to prop myself. <laughs> That's to watch true. The game. I didn't, I didn't think about that. Yeah, I mean, that is – so that is the the, the kind of – you know, Thursday games are always interesting because it speeds things up, but then you do get a nice little uh, nice little chill Saturday afterwards. Um, all right, then, Coach. So, so it wasn't just an analyst in 2011. Then you go to Colorado State. You come back, obviously, and coach at Alabama for a few more years, 13 to 16. Um, well, I, I got to ask you about this. So LSU's offense is obviously the, the, the big difference here, and, and even Alabama's offense, but – but really, LSU is given how reticent they were to change in those thirteen through sixteen games. Like, did were y'all threatened at all by LSU's offensive game plan? Well, LSU always is very, a very tough team. That's more the sum of the parts, you know. I think, um, you know, you got to defend the strengths of the other team, and certainly LSU's got they've got a different set of strengths this year. You know, what I mean. Um, I do think that um, they're using their skill players unlike any time they have in the past. You know that that's the thing that stands out to me. Yeah, and they do have an elite set of skill players. You know the the quarterback makes it all go. Uh, the offensive line continues to improve. You know they're getting good play from the Moss kid uh, and some of these elite receivers. I mean I know these kids because we were recruiting. You know, receivers throughout the years, they've got some special talent on that roster. So, you know, and and it's the sum of the parts, you know, tremendous team speed and athleticism, so they're good on special teams. Um, you know, and certainly Dave Miranda is probably one of the most respected defensive coaches in the country. So Coach O's done a nice job. He's hired a lot of really good people. Um, the, the team plays really hard. There's great morale there. Um you know, and certainly it's it's awesome to see um, LSU Bama game to be relevant national, like it should be each and every year. Yeah, yeah. And uh, as a wide receivers coach, a former wide receivers coach, I'm sure you could appreciate the unreal amount of wide receiver talent that'll be on that field. Um, I, I want to ask you this, though, Coach. So, so you're obviously the head coach now of UL, and, and like I said, y'all have turned things around. Um, Every week, so so O says this a lot, right? That that when you win every week, the next game gets bigger, and that's a scenario that you'll find yourselves in right now, uh, sure. given that you're trying to win that that uh, western portion of the division. How do you kind of keep your players' heads on straight? Because this is relevant across all of football in any big game. Like, what are your techniques to making sure that the moment doesn't get too big for them? Well, you don't really talk about that with the players. You know, I think you got to be process oriented. You got to really focus on things that are going to help you play well. Uh, and I think young people respond best uh, when they've got a routine. You know, they've got whether that's uh, classes, academics. It's it's uh, when they have their lift group, how we meet, how we move through, how we practice, how we install. Um, I think you got to get them in a routine and make them focus on the things that are going to help them play well. And certainly, you know, the last thing you need to do as a coach is um, amplify the magnitude of the game. I mean, they're getting that enough from the outside world, yeah. you know, all the external things. So I think we, we try to direct our players' attention to the technical things, you know, the, the communication, the fundamentals. The game's always come down to fundamentals and how well you execute what you got planned. And, you know, there's going to be emotion. Uh, and I think one of the more important things is to keep your poise uh, and have the discipline to execute when you get in those spots. So as much as you can, you want to make them zero in on those things. Certainly this time of year, um, you know, having self-discipline in your routine, making sure you're rested, making sure you're using the training room, um, you know, every each team gets the same amount of time. You know, it's it's yeah. uses uh, their time the best, uh, and then certainly every team's got its own set of problems. You know, I mean, uh, some teams' uh, success, having success, can become a problem. It, it's got its own set of problems, um, and certainly both of these teams, LSU and Alabama, um, they got they got those sets. So it's a good problem to have. Yeah. <laughs> I think both these guys have done a good job just having a chance to watch uh, both the teams play this year. Um, 
you know, they've played well in the big game so far. So, um, you know, our team hopefully would continue to be relevant and be in contention around here, create opportunities where we uh, play in big games. And certainly we're excited about the next one, and that's North Carolina Thursday night. Yes, sir. Coach Billy Napier, former Furman Paladin quarterback, coach at Alabama, now your head coach of the UL Raging Cajuns, looking for a second West Championship in a row. Catch them this Thursday against Coastal Carolina. Coach Napier, thank you so much for joining us this morning. All right, guys. Thank you all. Have a great day and go Cajuns. Yes, sir. You have a great day as well.